All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah, me too. Let's do it. I hope I'm ready. We'll see as we go, though. I'm like... <laughs> you are ready. <laughs> First time recording in a like remote location. So I'm really excited about that. Bridal Babes, say hello to the Bass Cabin. We're at the ranch. Uh, my now sister-in-law, Callie, is here. And we're going to talk about all things self-love, self-care, staying focused on that. Also, while you're engaged and planning a wedding. What's up, Bridal Babes? I hope you're ready to talk weddings with me on another exciting episode of your favorite wedding show, Bridal Buzz. I'm your host, Kat, and today, again, we're joined with my sister-in-law, Callie, and we're going to talk all things self-care and self-love. So let's get into it. Do you want to give them a little bit of insight into like what you do and how you relate to the self-care world? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Callie. I have an online Pilates studio, an app called Sway Studio. And so my focus with the studio is to have workouts that blend affirmations with low impact feel good movement. The goal is to not only help women around the world feel their best or achieve their physical results, but also to help them feel their absolute best inside and out. My motto is you cannot hate yourself into a body that you love. So it's all about speaking truth and life over yourself and truly loving yourself throughout every single step of the journey, no matter where you are. Yeah. And you were a November 2023 bride. So it's like Mm. been what, a month and a half since your wedding? Yeah, technically, <laughs> I was in April, right? Technically. April and November. Yes, you did the double wedding. Yes. Yeah, so if you listened to the previous episode with my mom, we talked a little bit about her experience being mother of the bride and mother of the groom. So we heard a little bit about Callie and John's wedding there and her experience with that. But we'll talk more about it, obviously, today since you're here. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit about your experience as a bride? Like, how was that overall? Was it fun? Was it like not what you expected it to be? What were your favorite parts? What were your like hiccup parts? Tell me all. Okay. I think, so I always heard that, I mean, a lot of people feel like the wedding is the most important day of their life. Growing up, it's like the Pinterest board, the wedding dress. I always watched Say Yes to the Dress growing up. So I always, I think for me, I always had this anticipation of oh my gosh what my what's my wedding dress going to be and it's really funny because actually going through the motions of it I really found myself not caring that much about the (laughs) nitty-gritty details especially doing I mean I'm a very I would call myself a very different type of bride than most I was very laid back very much not I would just so go with the flow with so much of it and I think like you said we did a did a double wedding I think that's partially why, because in April, we actually eloped. We had just a couple of family members there. It was on the beach. It was so carefree, very last minute, spur of the moment. We want to be with each other forever. Let's get married now. Let's just, why are we waiting? All this stuff. And I think because we got married, there was less pressure on the actual big day because nothing could take away from the fact that we were already married. And I first was really hesitant to do that because I was like, that doesn't make any sense the wedding is supposed to be when you get married but honestly it was so worth it and I think as a result the entire process of my planning my wedding I mean I waited to the very last minute to do pretty much everything but that's also how I am in general I'm a very like I always just believe that everything's gonna work out (laughs) it did everything worked out it was literally perfect (laughs) and I mean I just count you know just I'm just just blessing yeah but it was definitely the final two weeks leading up to it. I was very stressed. I mean, just trying to get all the nitty gritty details, trying to make sure everyone had a good experience at the wedding. Yeah. But it, I actually had a dream where it was, I was so focused on all the details that it took away from the most important parts of the day. And that dream allowed me to realize, okay, I need to stop being so hyper-focused on Aww. the details. It was ironic because the detail that I was focusing on so much was the, the seating chart sign and it didn't even get put in my wedding. So Did you make one? I did. And it didn't get put out. No, my parents didn't see it. It was tucked. It got, uh, I think it got, somehow it fell somewhere and they didn't see it. And oh. I, you don't understand. I had been so stressed about this stupid sign that didn't even show up. 
<laughs> God was preparing your heart. He's like, don't yes. even worry about it. Not a big deal. Exactly. That's what the dream was all yeah. about. It was prophetic. Wow. wow. <laughs> and everyone, it was fine. Finding our seats was easy and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know there wasn't a sign until after the wedding. They were like, oh, by the way, yeah. was there supposed to be a sign? Right. It's like those little things that you're like, oh, actually, wait, I didn't even think about that. But now looking back, like, oh, yeah, those flowers were missing on this, you know, chapel and that and this. But in the moment, you're just like giddy and you're, get, you know, you're celebrating with the person that you love. And mm-hmm. the seating chart is like the last thing that you're looking for when you walk into the reception hall. But yeah. leading up, you think it's going to be like the most important thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was I was planning. I was designed. So we had so many people. I didn't realize so many people last, last minute cancel weddings like the week of which I was getting so annoyed about that because I kept having to I was trying to basically make the seating chart where I knew people would get along and I was trying to put them together and then it kept getting messed up so I keep redesigning it and it was this whole thing and I was so stressed and it's just it's ironic yeah so and I feel like especially take note for destination weddings that is very common because people are just Mm -hmm. like oh actually can't can't make it yeah like covid was, technically, like money it's yeah it's it can be overwhelming but if you plan for that ahead of time it definitely helps with that like knowing that you you might have to make some last minute adjustments on the seating chart and just things like that but in mm-hmm. the headcount with the catering company you know hopefully yeah, they're yeah. cool with adjusting that yeah. but you never know um, it all worked out <laughs> exactly um and so what date are you guys going to celebrate as your anniversary <laughs> both both <laughs> Love celebrations when we were when we were dating we would celebrate every single month anniversary Aww. we'd always make it a day so you know gotta keep that going i love that well and then you get something in the spring and something in the fall so exactly it's like seasonal celebrations why not <laughs> we can say we are part what would it be part one married part two married for two years <laughs> yeah there you go married and a half married and a half <laughs> married and wedded <laughs> married and wedded <laughs> Um, what was like the most unexpected special moment on your wedding day? Mm, that's a really good question. Okay. I think um, for us, it was in the ceremony and when we had our smaller elopement, I guess is the word ceremony, we had the same guy doing our officiating our wedding and he had the pre-made vows because we didn't write our vows. So we were planning on writing vows for the second wedding. But, you know, waited to the last minute. <laughs> Me too. I, I didn't write my own didn't, vows. Didn't know. happen. <laughs> so we had the same vows again. But it, was re- <laughs> but it was really beautiful and special because obviously we've been married for uh, about, I don't know, five or six months at that point. I don't really know how long that yeah, time like it about <laughs> sounds right <laughs> we've gone through stuff when i picture the calendar in the year it looks like a, a half circle to <laughs> me so, yeah we've gone through stuff and it was really beautiful because when i first said those vows in april i mean they obviously meant stuff to me then but we hadn't gone through being married yet we didn't know what it really was and what yeah. it really meant we hadn't gone through hardships we got through some but not really like hardships hadn't gone through huge wins all those things and so going through the vows again in the ceremony i lost it i was like bawling my eyes out i sometimes when i cry really hard i get a nosebleed and i thought i got a nosebleed (laughs) i was like touching my nose like oh no but i didn't thankfully did not get a nosebleed just a little snotty but (laughs) it was all good and john was also crying too and it was just like that moment was so special to me we just both in that moment were thinking the same thing and it was just like wow we have really just oh our marriage is just so beautiful and that was really special yeah. experiencing that oh it's like you had like a little mini vow renewal yes yeah our pre-written vows again <laughs> <laughs> i love that and like even if they're somebody else's pre-written vows which is what we used to because i just got to a point where i was putting way too much pressure on myself like as a creative to like make the vows be like really poetic and it's like if that's why I want to write my own vows, that's not the right intention. <laughs> like, so I just found some really cute vows on Google. Shout out to Google.com. Cool. Uh, yeah, and we just made it happen. But I like want to get them printed out and put hanging in our house somewhere or something now. Because it's like the words are just so special. And to like remind ourselves of that every day, mm-hmm. I think is important. Um, yeah, I love that. That's beautiful. That's so and it's like also sh- just goes to show like every season that you go through is 
special and like to celebrate and recommit to your original goals together as a couple throughout it all is important. You don't have to wait for a 10 year anniversary to do Mm. something special. Like just saying your vows to each other. Like you could do that in bed Mm -hmm. alone. No one else has to be watching for it to mean something. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, that even goes to just show about weddings. There's so much, I think so many brides put pressure on themselves to have this perfect beautiful aesthetic wedding oh, yeah. but end of the day it's really it's not the end day of oh this is the most amazing day of my life it's just the beginning of mm. an incredible season and chapter exactly that's yeah if i yeah. could tell anyone a piece of advice it's focus more on the relationship and less on making people impressed yeah i feel like a lot of people picture their wedding as the last page in mm. a book but like what if we changed it to being the first page first chapter right yeah it's like that is not the climax like we still got ways to go yeah you know for real yeah for real like every birthday should be just as important as your wedding i don't know like i think yes finding your person and celebrating that huge but like putting the pressure to be like this is the biggest day of my life and especially with social media and i feel like you have a pretty good relationship with social media how did you find that balance and like being a bride and kind of knowing how much you wanted to share, Mm -hmm. like not putting that pressure on yourself to have like, you know, to be on brides.com as a featured influencer with a (laughs) wedding and like go into debt and all this stuff. Like, how did you balance that out? Was that a struggle for you? Or were you just kind of like, I'm gonna do this for me? Mm, I share a lot of my life online. I think I share a lot of it on my podcast primarily relationship wise though i'd say i'm a pretty private person for the most part so unlike instagram and tiktok and all of that which is a blessing because i mean my content isn't so much lifestyle it kind of is lifestyle but it's more focused around overarching wellness yeah and so i think like personal wellness right so i think to share my wedding i did share i shared photo of right before the um rehearsal dinner and i shared i shared some clips some moments some highlights but my goal was I didn't want to be on my phone for the entire wedding. I didn't, it wasn't about my followers. <laughs> it wasn't about impressing any, I mean, it was about my friends and family, a lot of it, but it wasn't about impressing people. And I think that was something I had to get really real with myself was like, okay, I don't have the largest budget in the world for this wedding. I mean, I could spend more money on this wedding if I wanted to, but I simply would rather put my money in other places like right. my new house I just bought or going on a trip or whatever the case is so that way for me wasn't a huge priority was having this super high budget thing like I know some people it is but for me it wasn't and so I think in terms of sharing online I just didn't want the day to feel like content day yeah and I mean when we were taking photos it kind of did and I was getting a little bit like okay and I'm someone who does that for a living I love it yeah I was like okay let's get back to the real moment yeah yes and but that's just how I am as a person. I just don't, I like candid moments. I don't yeah. love just taking photos and pretending everything's amazing. I mean, the best moments are when you're not videoing something. Right. Truly. Yeah. When people catch you just like being in the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where I was coming from. Just, yeah, it wasn't really about making anyone impressed. Yeah. Well, I applaud you because it's not easy. I think like, and people, I know for me being a wedding person, person online like there was a lot of oh I want to see this oh I want to see that and I'm like honestly Mm. I just there are some things like I didn't hire a content creator even though I'm sure it would have made sense for me and my business to do that but like I didn't want my my wedding day to be about my business you know it's like it's a personal day yeah (laughs) yeah exactly and I'm like y'all will hear all about it all the tea will be spilt on the podcast but I love podcasting (laughs) because like I can tell I can share like the nitty-gritty like okay you want the real stuff like I will tell I I will open up anything but it's like okay filming it in real time I'm like takes away from the moment (laughs) exactly yeah I'd rather tell you about it after it happened than take myself out of the moment to like record it yesterday there was something that happened and I was like oh this would have been such a funny TikTok and Jackson was like what I'm like that's the first time I've said that like I've never been like oh man I wish I would have you know recorded this whole situation and put it on TikTok and it was like a visa um, a blu-ray player wouldn't play the the DVD and it was just like the funniest situation anyway um but yeah I think DIFY do it for you if you want to have a content creator and have those memories in that kind of format 
do it. I think that's, you know, that's fun, but like, remember your intention and your why behind it. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's to please other people, if it's to get other people's applause, like I highly encourage you to rethink. Yeah, I was about to say that the intention setting into the day, really get real with yourself. Ask yourself, why am I wanting this? Why is this important to me? And out of a place of not judging yourself, but just being honest about it. Yeah, I would have. I truly would not have had that self awareness had I not asked myself, okay, <laughs> what? Why do I really want to share this online mm-hmm. right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so enough of the wedding talk we will still be talking about weddings of course but let's start focusing more on self-care self-love and like you mentioned earlier your platform is a combination of like physical goals but also like helping people feel their best overall mentally spiritually physically and i think you do such a great job of that and like jackson will walk in the room when i'm doing your pilates and you'll be like and just give yourself a big hug and he'll be like oh that's so sweet like it's so cute does he do it no, Jackson doesn't do Pilates with he me. He doesn't give himself a big hug. I know, right? Him. I'm like, you could at least join in for the affirmations, you know? <laughs> um, but I love it. And you know, there's not a lot of fitness people out there that I've found that focus just as much on, like, emotional, like, hype girl vibes as mm-hmm. you. So um, definitely check out Sweaty Studio, guys, if you're looking for that online workout and like meditation and anything else you're looking for in that kind of wellness. I got a couple of questions on Instagram. They're on my phone. I'm trying to remember what they were. I think one was like, how do you stay balanced in wedding planning and, you know, exercising and staying healthy and like being 100% in on everything? Like, I think people kind of struggle with juggling all of the balls especially if they're they have a full-time job mm-hmm. and maybe they have kids like there's just a lot that goes on and like how do you how would you what would be your advice on staying balanced with all of those things yeah i'm not gonna lie when i was planning my wedding i was thinking to myself how do people do this with a corporate nine to six nine to five job yeah. it's crazy right but like, just the days that these vendors are like oh can you can you come do your walkthrough or, you know, can you come do a floral thing? Can you come do a makeup trial? And it's like the middle of the day on a Wednesday. And it's like, <laughs> I only have so many days off and I yeah. want to use them for my honeymoon, to be honest. like Yeah. Because yeah. you planned it when you had a full-time yeah. job. Mm-hmm. And luckily working in the wedding industry, my boss was a lot more lenient, but mm. I will not lie. We did have a sit down talk about him being like, you're missing work a little bit too much. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, the hard part is wedding vendors work on the weekends so like you can't go and do a venue tour odds are on a friday or a saturday it just doesn't work like that so it's so true yeah um okay well balance i don't think perfect balance truly exists it really comes down i mean in my own life like if let's say one season of my life demands let's just use wedding, wedding planning for example if the wedding's coming up quickly and that is that is like i have to do it that's going to take up a lot of my time so it's going to make the scale lean heavier towards that and so maybe i'll have less time to go hang out with my friends Mm -hmm. or less time to do a long workout or less time to just just do other stuff because it does take up time we only have so many hours in a day on top of that with work because you have to think about but I think a great place to start when figuring out, okay, how do I actually balance my life is to write down your non-negotiables and your negotiables. So a non-negotiable be something you have to do or it could be something that maybe you aren't forced to do, but you know that you need to do that in order to feel like a good version of yourself. Yeah. And then look at the list of negotiables. Actually, I'll, re- I'll rewind a little bit. Make a list of your day-to-day, kind of everything that's happening in your day. Dump it down. doesn't have to be organized. And then start to just circle your list of non-negotiables. What are the things that you can't remove? And then go back and look at what are the negotiables. So the times when maybe you have to add something like wedding planning that is going to eat up a lot of time, the negotiables are going to hit the back burner for a little bit. Mm. Doesn't mean they, they won't come back. But I think so often people get so discouraged because they're like, 
I feel like I just can't juggle everything all the time. I know I've experienced that a lot, especially yeah. adulting in general. It feels like there's a lot of responsibilities to do all yeah. the time. I'm like, how do people do this? Yeah. It really does come down to having your non-negotiables and also making sure that with your health and wellness, if that is something that you know you need, making that non-negotiable, add it to your phone calendar, add a reminder, have an accountability buddy, do what you got to do to make it feel like it's a work meeting yeah something you can't skip yeah like you're not giving up or just like totally turning a blind eye to those things yeah. that are really really important to you yeah i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna be honest i'm a fitness instructor and the week or two leading up to my wedding i was pushing my workouts and my own personal health to the back burner so i could have more time to plan the wedding as a result i felt on my honeymoon the first few days my cup was so empty mm. it was crazy i was just laying there like I am so tired right wow. now. It's crazy. And I think if I had actually given myself even like a 10 minute workout or just time to just sit yeah. and journal and cook a healthy meal, I think I would have felt so much better after the wedding and way less burnt out. Yeah. So are those like three of your non-negotiables typically? Like definitely. Yeah. yeah. Healthy <laughs> meal, journaling, 10 minutes at least of working out. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think those are, I mean, those are three good ones. And I feel like you know, in the right mindset, if you can make it happen, you can make it happen. And that makes me think that the all or nothing mindset, a lot of times with workouts, with eating healthy, with hanging out with friends, with going on dates, whatever, you have to be perfect at every single thing all the time. Yeah. And a lot of times that causes people to give up really quickly mm. and to just call it quits on whatever that thing is mm. where if instead you just take a little small baby steps maybe you shred it back a little bit so it's instead of a 60 minute workout at a gym because okay let's be real when you go to a gym it's not just a 60 minute workout you have to drive there you have yeah. to commute then you do you your workout your locker yes. and, yeah you have to put your stuff down find your workout or mm -hmm. plan your workout do the workout and then drive home shower make your protein shake it turns into a two-hour experience yeah. i love going to the gym sometimes but i will say on my busy days it's not realistic no. so maybe finding instead during that busy season okay i am going to do my workouts at home that cuts out the commute time and maybe doing a workout that doesn't cause you to sweat a ton yeah. <laughs> so you can skip the whole shower reapply all my makeup do my mm -hmm. hair all that stuff just making it work for that season of life that you're in yeah yeah i think that is probably the most important part is like also remembering what you said of the scales will never be perfectly balanced like perfect equilibrium i don't know where it exists in the universe it probably does somewhere but it's not going to be with anything we as humans are approaching mm -hmm. and like we don't want that because if something is perfectly balanced it's like stagnant it's stale like it's there's no movement you That's know so we need the ebb and the flow um so i think remembering that and giving yourself grace in the wedding planning process when you're feeling like I have to be 100% in everything. You don't, you can't, you just can't give 100% of yourself to everything that you do. You don't have eight hours in the day for 10 different things, That's you know, sure. like, Maybe if you're in the X-Men or something and you <laughs> have some superpower to stop time, but um, we just, we can't force physics to change just because we're in a stressful season so that's so true i so love good. that yeah write down your non-negotiables and that comes to weddings too like if you have a tight budget make sure you're writing down your non-negotiables early on so that you don't get distracted by all the things you're seeing on pinterest and instagram and people's opinions because your friends will be sending you things you can spend money on your parents will be <laughs> sending you things you can spend money on and it's not their fault they're just excited like you are there's no cap yeah truly <laughs> no cap in the wedding planning um <laughs> but you just have to remember diy do it for you and your partner and if it's not in your non-negotiables and you're kind of getting in that tight budget room, like next, thank mm -hmm. you next. So yeah, for me, that was florals. Hmm. We did, my wedding was pretty DIY and we ended up doing, we went to Hobby Lobby and got the fake flowers for the centerpiece. Honestly loved it. I they thought it looked beautiful. great. Yes. And it was, it was still, I'm not going to lie, it was still expensive. It was probably like a thousand ish dollars, but comparison to how much it would have been, it yeah. was way less. Yeah. With real flowers, probably would have been like 4000 I know. And yeah. we can resell them too. Boom. Or rent them. Start a wedding rental business. 
<laughs> I know I could. <laughs> oh, that's a whole. You're like you're like I already have too many businesses like, under one. <laughs> I thought about it. They're in my garage right now, just sitting there. Like, yeah. How do I get rid of these? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or like donating them to the church or something. True. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, tax write off. I wish there was like some sort of or maybe there is some organization that maybe people who can't afford to have a super nice wedding or just live in a lower income area i wish there was like some sort of wedding company Mm. that you could donate your wedding things to and then they would give it to these these brides so they could still have a wedding yeah huh i wonder if that is a biz idea bridal babes please let me know if you've heard of something like that yeah because typically it's like you have to compete for one person getting a free wedding and it's like all of the other people in this competition don't get anything so I would love to see a space where it's like, hey, if you are within a certain income bracket or, you know, whatever, you can come and do it for free or a very small fee. Um, There's a chapel outside of Austin where I think it's like a $50 venue rental, um, but you can only get it for like an hour. I might Mm. be totally butchering all these details, but it's something like that. (laughs) Okay. But they don't give you like the decor and your, you know, all these other things to make your wedding like feel a little bit more special in like, you know, an event. Um, I think it's just the chapel. So yeah, that would be interesting. That was, yeah. I love that idea though. That was something that I noticed like planning the wedding. I was thinking to myself, honestly, having a nice wedding is super inaccessible it is like you have to just have a ton of money sitting around to have it tons of money or your parents pay for it mm -hmm. which not everyone has that no i'm i was just thinking about it i was like so many girls deserve to have a wedding of their dreams and they probably can't afford it because it's just so ridiculously expensive now and i just i hope we can all reshape the dream wedding because i think we've gotten it's just so toxic seeing wedding magazines instagram pinterest like the things we're seeing could be $500,000 weddings. So true. Like the, you know, if you see an arch of pure flowers, that's like a $10,000 arch. Like that is a Honda Accord used. True. But like you're never getting that back. You know, it's, it is actually insane. The amount of money that is spent on weddings. I will, I will say with my venue, I really liked this. It was because the actual, it was outside. It was so much beautiful nature. Yeah. The photos look so good They're and so, so pretty. pretty. And it's literally trees. There's not a $10,000 <laughs> arch making the photo. It's like finding a venue maybe that's beautiful and on its yes. own is another good little hack. Yes. You want to have cute photos and mm-hmm. stuff. Easy. Like if you can have the venue that already has the backdrop. Boom. Exactly. Like the wedding we went to in Monterey. Oh my well, god! The de- decorations were over the top and stunning inside. But like. <laughs> the background for the ceremony it's like you didn't need that's to have all you need anything yeah that. yeah yeah my venue i had was probably one of the more affordable options in the area and it was like stunning it was so trees. beautiful and like yeah. i wouldn't have ever been like oh that's in florida like looking mm. at it it looks like you're in colorado like surrounded by aspens or something it was really cool yeah it was beautiful <laughs> and i need i need the gallery i haven't seen like all the photos yet i know i haven't gotten them yet oh, okay you just have the sneak peeks yeah she texted me they're coming soon. Oh, she was so sweet. Mm-hmm. I think next week I get them. All the vendors that you chose, they were good people. Very good people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was cool. They were all God selected, truly. That's oh, a whole man. other story. It's really cool. <laughs> That's why everything worked out, truly, is because I was just listening to the Lord on who to have from wow. the vendors. Yeah. Wow. And they did such a good job. And you did such a good job of just, yeah, trusting the Lord and trusting your intuition. Okay. Well, let's get into a couple of Reddit stories. I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay. So the stories I found uh, when I typed in self-care, a lot of them were weight and relationship with self-image. So I didn't want to choose all the stories about that. Some of them are, but there's a couple of stories that are in different uh, yeah. categories as well. And that's a huge, a huge thing people deal yes. with. Yes. First story. Is someone else here worried you won't fit in your wedding dress? This is causing me so much anxiety. Hi everyone, how are you dealing with this? Is someone else experiencing dread and anxiety over putting on your wedding dress just days from your wedding and it won't fit? I'm seriously losing sleep about this and it's literally my nightmare. My wedding is in 10 weeks. I got my dress back in February and I actually just tried it on twice, the first time in January and then in February when I purchased it. As you can see here, I absolutely loved the dress and it's all I want. However, I bought the sample size 12 
fully conscious it's tight on my abdomen and I never sat while wearing it. So I don't even know if I can even sit while using it. My plan was to lose a few kilos in a healthy way with healthier diet and exercise. And while today I weigh about three kilos less than the day of the picture in January, I haven't tried on my dress again. And I'm literally losing sleep over it, fully worried I won't be able to sit and be comfortable in my dream dress. If you're in a similar position, how do you deal with it? The last thing I want is to develop an unhealthy relationship with my weight. Thanks for reading. It just, it hurts my heart to hear that she's losing sleep over I know. Uh, fitting into her dress. Mm, okay. I have my thoughts. Okay. I definitely experienced the same feeling. Um for a little different reason though, just because I was pregnant and then I got my <laughs> it was so funny because I got my dress and it was a super fitted mermaid dress. Mm-hmm. And I got it before I knew I was pregnant. And I then found out I was pregnant and I was like, How am I gonna fit in this dress? Because it was also the sample size Mm -hmm. and i took it to my alterations person and i was telling her i was like i don't know there was a little bit of room in the belly but i was still very very nervous about it long story short ended up no longer being pregnant and it still fit me fine but i definitely was nervous about it and i think what i will say is that for someone who is nervous about fitting in their dress it's not everything Hmm. the dress is not everything and I was really concerned about it at first to the point where I was almost being a little upset that I was pregnant. And looking back, that's honestly really sad that I I was experiencing that feeling. And I think it's because I think it goes deeper than the wedding dress. I think it goes into body image, relationship with yourself, how you see your body. If let's just say school, let's just go back to a school uniform We always outgrew our school uniforms as we were growing up. I mean, that's just what kids do. You grow and you outgrow your uniform. But I I would never be upset when I outgrew my uniform. Mm. I think think it's super normal to have fluctuations in your body. But like if you are so scared to grow and have a fear around it, it's looking at that. I mean, like, okay, this, this is a deeper thing I need to work through. I need to understand why I'm why I'm having this fear around not fitting my dress. Is it, does it stem from something that I ally in believing about myself? Does it stem from wanting to impress a certain person? Does it stem about wanting to prove something? Is it pride related? Truly getting honest with yourself mm-hmm. and working through that. I think that could be the main reason for such a strong fear. It yeah. is definitely normal to, I don't want to use the word normal. It definitely can happen where it's like, okay, am I going to fit in my dress? Yeah. And in my situation, when I was having those bit of those fears, a solution that was, okay, I'll just get another dress. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Yeah. Truly, it's really not. And in the day, what happened actually with my wedding is I had the fitted mermaid dress, but then I actually was uncomfortable because I wanted a looser dress to dance in. So I just brought another dress for the reception. Yeah. And I think that that's also a good solution for maybe if you do feel like the dress is a little too tight on your body, it's uncomfortable, providing that other option for yourself that's looser, more flowy. That's what I did and it was honestly amazing. But yeah, I would definitely go and really like dive into that fear because anytime there's fear, that is a signal that something's not exactly going on that's healthy inside the mind. Yeah, especially if you're losing sleep and like specifically to this issue like your seating chart thing it's like okay if this is actually eating away at my subconscious I need to sit down with it and like assess is this a Mm non-negotiable is wearing this specific dress like that important to my wedding day and why yeah you know and you know I I didn't try on wedding dresses until I got to a point where I was like I don't care if I lose weight actually Like I wanted to lose 15 pounds before I even started trying on wedding dresses because I didn't want to visualize myself in a different body shape than what I was actually going to have on my wedding day. And then I took boudoir photos for work, which is not something you hear every day, but I did. (laughs) (laughs) And I saw the photos and I was like, dang, like that's me. Like 
my husband is lucky. Like <laughs> yes. I was looking at myself in like the wrong colored glasses for so long and shout out to Secrets by Miss Lisa. She helped me feel so much better about myself. And I was like, actually, okay, I need to get a wedding dress. My wedding is in six months. It's mm. time to get a wedding dress. Like I can't wait any longer. But there was that, there's, it, it ate away at me for a little bit and I made it so important and then I got to a point where I was like actually I don't care and then I did actually lose 10 pounds before my wedding thanks to helpful sweaty studio and just being better with the food that I was eating but it wasn't because I needed to it was because I was like I just, I genuinely needed to reshift my daily habits Mm. and it wasn't because my wedding was coming up that I was doing that. It was just Mm. like, it's time, you know, when I shifted that internal perspective for myself, like it wasn't about losing weight. It was about me and just being the healthiest version of myself, period, past the wedding and beyond. And so I think for this bride... Having a backup dress, if it's actually something that stresses you out that much, you can find some really beautiful wedding dresses online for $100 or less. And they're not going to be full-on ball gowns, but it's still something that you can feel beautiful and feel like a bride in. And just having that conversation with yourself of like, will my day be ruined, really, if I have to wear a different dress? Will I care about this in five years? That's a really good question. Yeah. Or will I care more about the negative self-talk that I was having with myself and, you know, like realizing, oh my gosh, like this, I was so distracted trying to fit into my dress. I forgot to tell this person, thank you. Mm. I forgot to, you know, sit down and journal and, you know, do things that are actually healthy for me because I was so focused on counting calories or, you know, whatever it may be that she's doing to help herself lose weight. But um, at the end of the day, I think anything you do self-care, self-love wise in your wedding planning season, it should just, it should be for you. Like, even if it's whitening your teeth, like, because at the end of the day, if you show up at the altar and your teeth are not pearly white, your, your universe is not going to shatter, you know, it's like, and if you're building all this up for that one day, like we talked about earlier, like it's going to be the, the best day, the final chapter of the book, then what comes next? you know, crash and burn. No, thank you. So that's so good about doing it truly for you. I mean, I was reading this book, Atomic Habits, and it talks about how it's like building sustainable habits. He specifically was talking about running, how if someone is simply running to train for a marathon, the odds of them continuing running afterwards are so much slimmer, Mm. where if they make it a lifestyle, if they make it part of their just day to day, and because they want to be a runner, it's way more likely to become consistent and sustainable. Mm. And that's same thing for healthy habits too. That's so good. That is like literally perfect metaphor, perfect comparison. It's like, yeah, your your wedding is the marathon that you're training for right now, but you want to make sure that what you're doing is for the rest of your life. And it, the information and, you know, when it comes to wedding planning and knowing all these details about how many people to sit at a table of this length and whatever, that can doesn't have to be forever. But the self-care, the self-love, the daily habits – it's all about you, the family you're establishing, the person you're spending the rest of your life with, and doing it for you. Mm-hmm. It's my most repeated phrase on the show. And that's why I'm coming out with some merch with the DIFY Ooh. phrase on it. So I love that. Yeah, it's going to be cute. It's so cute. I'm really excited about that. So hopefully in the next episode, I'll be wearing something or holding something in my Aww. hand. Yeah. And my wedding guide is out technically wait you made a wedding guide yeah remember i sent it to you for like the week before the wedding yes mm-hmm. yes yes That's right so i've like fine-tuned it a lot since then Aww. um and yeah i'm really excited hopefully you guys have seen it uh shared it with bride to bees uh bought it downloaded it um and my free planning priorities list is also on my website so make sure you check that out if you don't want to buy the full guide but anyway really exciting things happening okay so i think that's I think that's good on that story. Okay. I just, yeah, to that OP, to that that bride to be. I just, I, I wish them peace of mind, and to remember that your day, your life is not going to be ruined because of one dress. And I'm sure you look beautiful, and you've already lost three pounds, so the odds are, is going to fit. 
True. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> My abuela would say, no te preocupes. Don't you worry. Okay. It's going to be okay. Okay. Let's see. This one's a little bit more about like balance. So title is balancing multiple life events. Any other brides that are buying a home and other big life events? First, I want to say I am grateful and lucky, so I don't want to come off as ungrateful. I just want advice on time management and stress management. I just moved into my first condo with my fiance. We went through escrow in July and just moved Saturday. The home still needs things done to it, and right now I'm living with boxes everywhere. I started a new job August 1st, and my wedding is November 5th. It feels like there is still more to do for my wedding. Vendors are all booked, though, and I cannot seem to find the time right now to do anything for it. Everything is revolving around this home and my new job. I'm exhausted, and I feel like a bad bride for not being more on top of the planning. I barely have time for self-care, let alone getting back into planning. I just want to see if anyone has been in my shoes and how you managed it. Any pro tips? So I know this is uh... so relatable. <laughs> it's almost like I could have written that one. <laughs> Callie, was this you? Was like this almost me? like on the tee with the timing of the wedding and everything. It's so true. <laughs> wow. Um, I definitely was really stressed. I'm not going to lie. It was because I, I was we bought our house in was that July or August. Our wedding was November. <laughs> it's literally your story. But we yeah. were renovating <laughs> the house. And I was also working. I mean, I didn't start a new job, but I was working my job, which yeah. is working my business, which, which is, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. You run your own business. Yeah. Because yeah. I was, I have monthly launches. So I think I was doing a launch too. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I think my best advice is truly, truly trying to not do it all by yourself. I used to be the type of person that I would just want to do everything myself. Mm. I put it all on me. And as a result, I just crumbled during the home renovation process. John and I actually learned how to ask for help, which was shout out Kaki <laughs> for literally helping us redo yeah. our floors and her mom as well. Shout out Cynthia. Yeah. And shout out our other friends, Sammy and Mike. They <laughs> helped us so much and it would not have been possible to get done without all of our friends. Yeah, but it takes knowing how to ask and delegate for totally. sure. Totally. Delegation. That's what I was looking for. It is so key. And I mean, I'm still working on how to delegate properly. I think at the end of the day, it's just being your own advocate and realizing that you don't deserve to be constantly piled and stressed. Yeah. And if you feel like you are so stressed to the point where you're just going to break in half, just reach out to someone, reach out to a friend, reach out to your significant other, reach out to your family and be like, hey, this is happening. Is there any way you could help me with this? Yeah. Chances are if they do care about you, which probably they do, they'll be Fingers like, crossed. yes, like how can I help you? Yeah. And just giving them any, any tasks, specifically wedding too. I mean, a lot of my family members wanted to help me with it. And I was so like, no, 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 I'm going to do it all myself because I don't want to be a bother to anyone. You're not a bother to anyone, mm -hmm. first of all. That's a lie. That's not true. That's a lie I believed for such a long time is I was a bother. I didn't deserve it. But you do deserve. You deserve help. You deserve someone to help release that load from your plate. Yeah. And I think it's all about truly reaching out to your community. I mean, look at how humans used to operate way back. We used to be tribes. We used to live in super tight tribes where everyone helped everyone. Everyone yeah. was doing life together. I think our culture now is very much revolving around self and revol revolving around okay how can you build your career yourself how can you do this yourself it's a less focused on okay how can i how can i do life with other people and one of the best ways to do life with other people is to simply help and ask for help from other people support each other that is that is the best way to reduce that load yeah for sure yeah i think that that helped me a ton also just dumping everything down on paper that's <laughs> also really helpful like having Exercise. everything written now yes yeah. i mean we did that when you were in florida we wrote down i was super stressed at my wedding we just wrote down everything that i need to do left i was like i feel like i'm missing something i just don't know what that was really really helpful too oh, i'm so glad that i was able to help not only with the floors but yeah just like with peace of mind around the wedding because you had it all taken care of and it's just it takes like okay just fine tuning it all out, making sure all of the gears have been oiled, you know, whatever metaphor you want to throw out there. But yeah, it just, 
it sometimes you just have to bounce the ideas off of somebody and make sure you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. But I think that's a great piece of advice is just like you have community, you have people, and especially in your wedding planning and your first home and like these milestones in your life, people are going to be more apt to jump to help because they yes. want to be a, a part of that you know special day that new beginning for you um so i don't want to be like take advantage of that but like take advantage of that you know um don't don't let that opportunity slide to the wayside because you're you don't want to be a burden on someone yeah, or not a burden. you think you're asking too much you know that's up to them to establish their boundaries i mean ask yourself if your friend was in the exact same place as you and asked you for help with something would you look at them like oh you're such a burden <laughs> And if so, uh, evaluate that. Self work. <laughs> That's a, what do you call it? A healing op. Yeah. Healing op. Healing op. <laughs> but for real, like people want to help. At the end of the day, people want to help. People want to sh- express love in. If that looks like acts of service and that's what you need in that moment, or maybe it's financial uh, donation, <laughs> like however they can be there for you and help make that moment easier. Um, I hope you have the community around you that will help make that happen. But it's definitely hard uh, to be surrounded by, I know the fridge is making a weird noise. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't make sure it wasn't something. In the mic. In the mic. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm hoping that my noise uh, reducer will. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's okay. Bridal Babes, we are in a cabin with a mini fridge making crazy noises. So it's not the worst thing that's happened on the show. <laughs> Uh, there was a dog once and um she like kicked a doorstop and it literally sounded like a wet toot it was like (laughs) 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 just like straight in the earbuds like oh Oh my my gosh gosh. Uh, i used to have crazy things happen i do i'd film workouts in my apartment in miami like on the balcony and we were right above the pool level (laughs) so there was always construction happening and it was like I had beef with the construction uh-huh. workers. I would they'd be eating their breakfast tacos and I'd be doing my workouts like early in the morning to avoid them and they'd start before before the time that you just started and I would be like staring them down like doing my donkey <laughs> kick. I'm like no <laughs> like do you not see I'm trying to work here. Do not they'd be like uh, staring I'm like stop it. <laughs> uh. So the top comment on this post says take a solid weekend off from all of it, then dive back in. You have the rest of your life for the house stuff, true prioritize and make a list of stuff to do in the new year i love that it's like yes you just got the house and it seems like everything needs to be done now and it's easier to do sooner rather than later but if the wedding is coming uh you got a wedding to plan for and you definitely need to like decide do i need to put all my eggs in my house basket right now or can that basket wait a month you know yeah and for you guys it was like we have to put in new floors like we can't not put in new floors it actually needs to happen because you had the welcome party at your house and our lease was ending too yes yeah yeah like the week after your wedding you had your old lease ending and you're gonna be on your honeymoon and like all these things so it was like we actually you had to do that before yeah but i think there is a pressure to just get everything done right away that's a a low-key perfectionist pressure Mm -hmm. and there doesn't have to be that it doesn't I mean, house stuff, like you're saying, it doesn't happen overnight usually. Yeah, it takes no. time. We're not fully done with our house yet. Mm-hmm. It's been months now. No, the minute I moved into my house, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. do this. And I haven't done any of it because money and time. True. And I'm like, I can live with the shower for the time being. Yeah, for real. <laughs> it's fine. I can live with tape yeah. on my floor. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> we still have tape on our floor. No. Take it off. No, we have to install like the door oh, things. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yep. we've. I mean, it's life. We've been out of town, yep. going, 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 yep. and it's one of those things where you have to give yourself grace. Yeah, it's okay to have tape on the floor. Yeah, your social media, I think, does a great job of making us feel like everything has to be perfect all the time. Yes, put together all the time. The reality of it, no one's perfect, Mm-mm. and that goes back to weddings. It's yes. like it's social. What you see on social media is a photoshopped, expensive version of what you're going to be able to get in real life unless you know you're a millionaire and you're going to be able to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on your wedding go for it if that's what you want to do and you'll have that you know j-lo wedding that gwen stefani wedding that you're looking for but for most of us it is going to be um 
a shock when you realize like what you can actually with the bang you can get for your buck i was uh, shocked yeah yeah sticker <laughs> shock goes both ways it's like oh my gosh wait i can only afford this or that's gonna be that expensive like okay time to reevaluate mm-hmm. but part of what i want to do with this show is reminding people like you can make magic happen with just you and your partner and an officiant on the beach like that is a beautiful wedding and if you get more than that great but like you don't have to and i think the pressure that we put on ourselves to have some sort of sort of barbie land cinderella wedding um i just hope we get over that i hope we let go of that and i hope gen z (laughs) is part of that and i think they will be i think gen z cares a lot more about um the moment than they do like the photos of the moment which sounds weird because they take photos of all the moments but i really do think that that generation cares more about like the connection the real people connection versus like trying to come off as some sort of way on social media that's about the perception Fingers crossed we're heading in that direction. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the wedding industry, I don't know how expensive it'll be in several years from now. I know. With inflation. Only going up. My venue, like, went up several thousand dollars. Really? From the time you booked it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just like that. It's crazy. It, yeah. I don't, it's, it's becoming, like, low-key this exclusive thing. I mean, this is a whole other topic. I know. And like you're saying, it's, like, very unattainable. Like, yeah. having a, a luxury wedding is so unattainable. And Even having just a normal wedding. A normal wedding. Mine was, like, I'll just say the number out loud. It was $20,000, which, I mean, when I first heard that number, I was, like, oh, my gosh, that's so much money. Like, I can do so much with this. No, it's a budget wedding with what there is out there yeah which is crazy and twenty thousand dollars yeah is budget <laughs> uh, i think average is anywhere from like 27 to 43 depending on the state that you're in so wow. yeah yeah but you made it happen and it was magical and it was beautiful and did you need to be spending fifty thousand dollars no i was actually thinking about that. i was like what if i had let's say 100 200 thousand dollars spent on the wedding what would have i done differently yeah really not that much Mm -hmm. i mean it was i loved it and the only thing that i would have done differently is had music in dinner but honestly it wasn't that big of a deal (laughs) like yeah it was like in the moment it's like we can't put it on we don't have to and yeah like people were chatting nobody noticed nobody was like where's the music you know right if there had been music it would have been nice but it wasn't a make or break it yeah yeah i'm glad that's the one thing that you're like Oh, that was what I would have done differently. That's that's good. I love sleeping with like no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I was happy yeah. about turned out. <laughs> good, good. Everything went so smoothly. No, it was a perfect day. I feel like I put like having a little bit of a bigger budget from what my parents saved me and like putting all of the pressure being in the wedding industry. I I gave myself more regrets after my wedding mm. because I just I had so many expectations of the people I was working with what things were supposed to look like, uh, you know, all these different things. And so I ended up leaving with like a couple of sore spots. And Mm. I just hope I really, I want to help anyone avoid that and have realistic expectations and go in and have a day that was even better than they could have ever imagined. Makes me happy to know that you, (laughs) there's just that one moment. That's good. Yeah, it was honestly turned out great. It was. It was such a good day. And the rehearsal and the wedding, the welcome party, like, it was all so fun. I loved the welcome party. I think I liked the welcome party pretty comparable to the wedding. It was so fun. Yeah. That was something I I didn't expect to do, which I would definitely recommend to anyone because I think a wedding, especially destination wedding, I mean, ours was in our hometown, but it was destination for most of our family and friends because everyone lives in Texas and not in Florida. It was really cool because instead of having the wedding be the one event you see everyone who's come into town, we had these different moments to hang out with our friends and family more than just the wedding. And I think that was so beautiful because at the end of the day, it was about, we'd already gotten married. The wedding celebration was about literally celebrating. So to be able to just like have a full weekend with everyone, that was beautiful. And then we had a little family brunch on Sunday before everyone left. That was really fun too. You you did the same thing. We had like a bigger brunch. Yeah. I loved, I loved that. I was, it's, it was that was a non-negotiable for us was having the weekend events because it's like the wedding day goes by so fast yeah for real you're everyone's at the venue for like six to eight hours and like the the time that you actually get to spend with each of your guests is maybe 
five minutes each if you're lucky you know like I, yeah yeah so, so having the welcome to. party having the brunch just gives you that extra time to like soak up True. the experiences and i think that's the most important part is yeah making those memories showering everyone who loves you enough to come to your wedding with so much love because it's not easy to be a wedding guest it's expensive it's time consuming and so if somebody commits to being at your wedding it's like dang you're you're a real one like for real love you for real (laughs) yes so shout out to the real ones (laughs) okay i think this will be our last story oh actually no we'll do two more stories this one's really short wedding is six months away what tips do you have for whitening teeth glowing skin any self-care that will make me feel my best on the big day i'm working out four days a week eating right and hydrating but i want to do more So I wanted to bring this up just in case you had like any daily habits or little pieces of advice for people who are just in general, like, yeah, she says she's prepping for the wedding, but just like wanting to give themselves more, be healthier, have better skin, better gut health, all of those things. Yeah. So this is actually something I did a couple days ago that I recommend for everyone. I went to a naturopathic doctor. You did. You did your blood screens. Oh, she did a muscle test. It Whoa. was really cool. Have you ever heard of that? I don't know. It was super weird. I I don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> I was I was like seeing that I'm like, what is this? I was like, is this does this do anything? But it was really cool. And my friend recommended her to me. Basically found out I have I think seven to nine percent good bacteria in my stomach. Uh Whoa. and you were supposed to have seventy five percent good bacteria. <gasps> Yeah, there, I found a lot of things that I didn't. I was so I've struggled with acne on my skin for years now. I thought it was it could be related to gain off of birth control. That's when it started, the hormone imbalances, and I've been trying everything under the sun. But for some reason, I was so resistant to going to a dermatologist because I just thought to myself, I feel like you know, I just deep down, I'm I love like holistic wellness. You don't want to just like get medicine. Yeah, I'm like, there is a reason behind this. I just know it. I know it's not just slap on some medicine and it'll go away. Yeah. It is something causing it. Anyways, went to a naturopathic doctor. She told me, okay, you need to, you need to work on the good bacteria. Okay. There's a parasite in your stomach too. We need to get that going. Whoa. And I was learning a lot of people have parasites and don't realize that they're very common. Yeah. Um, Well, our cousin's girlfriend, Maria, she's on a cleanse. mm, Same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm about to be on a parasitic a cleanse. cleanse. Yeah, to be on a little cleanse, and I learned um, I learned more about my health. But anyways, that was something that like it just finding out these things kickstarted me back into my wellness yeah. wellness girly era. I want to eat so healthy. I haven't had this desire to just eat nourishing foods in so long. Mm. I love to eat healthy. Like, don't get me wrong, but. I feel like my body just was trained to crave sugar all the time, crave bread all the time. Mm. And as a result, I was really abusing not eating enough vegetables every day. Just filling yourself up with the wrong things. Yeah. And like I'm a firm believer in all these, all this stuff balance. But I realized like, okay, the balanced balance was going on the way wrong into the spectrum. And so anyways, that being said, if you want to give yourself a really good self-care thing, Go to a naturopathic doctor mm. for real. Learn what's actually going on in your body because you can do all these different wellness things, take all different supplements. Yeah. I learned what supplements work for me, what don't. I all my supplements, most of my supplements don't do that much for my body because everyone's body is very different. Yeah. So some supplements work for someone, others don't work for other people. Anyway, she tested all of them. And if I had known this like years ago, it would have just changed the game for me. Yeah. Cause you're like taking all these pills and yes. it's like, actually, your body doesn't maybe need that like somebody right. else's body does it's giving you like a bio individual plan mm. for how to actually take care of yourself yeah it's the most empowering thing i've done in a really long time and i'm just so truly excited to be on this journey again i was drinking my chlorophyll water earlier i was like i miss <laughs> yes, this queen. i miss this <laughs> so yeah that's my tip honestly instead of yeah. just adding all these like random habits right. figure out what you actually need because right. the internet can tell you so many things and while it might be helpful there could be something more helpful for totally. you specifically totally huh. i think another habit that i mean everyone can do is i love just carving out time to journal and spend time with the lord if you're a believer that has been something that i mean truly changed my life this year it's that aspect just 
anytime I feel weird or off and I'm like, oh, I haven't spent time with God in several days. That's probably why. And then I'll go and just sit in prayer, read the Bible, all the things. And it's like that in itself is its own cleanse. Yeah. Like a spiritual mental cleanse is yeah. always helpful for the physical. Totally. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. I love that. I'm so glad you went because we were talking about that last time I saw you and you're like, I want to go get this, these things tested. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm trying to get John to go now. I think, hey. he, I think he wants to go. I was like, I called him on the phone on the way back and I was like <laughs> giddy. I was like, oh my gosh. And like this and this and this and this are wrong. And like this and this will fix it. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you're like, I'm going to get healthy. It's like chlorophyll. <laughs> and I love that for you because you're already a healthy person. And so mm. like to even to recognize and be like, I can take a step further. Like, yeah, I'm excited. Is, yeah. I'm a little yeah. nerd when it comes to wellness stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So my internet's down. So I guess that was going to be our last story for the day. Oh, wait, here we go. She's back. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> okay. This one is kind of similar to the first story that we read and okay. it's about body image again. Okay. So last story of the day, bridal babes. And the title is, <laughs> they're so <laughs> sensitive. Um, Title is, I just said yes to the dress and am confused about continuing my strength training. I chose a form-fitting dress and my stylist warned me of weight training as it could change the shape of my hips, waist, and butt. The dress I tried on fit perfectly besides some tightness around my waist, so we ordered the next size up. I go to Orange Theory regularly and, and I'm not sure if I should cancel and focus on yoga or continue what I'm doing. Did anyone else have this issue with a form-fitting dress? What did you do? Okay, I think my answer to that question is to honestly just keep doing what you've been doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think if she were to make a drastic change of just completely switching her exercise program, her yeah. body might have a drastic change. Yeah. Especially, she, especially if she's been going to Orange Theory for a long time. Yeah. Let's say six months plus, her body could already be kind of plateaued from Orange Theory where it's not going to have the drastic shift there's a thing when people first start getting into weight training sometimes the beginner results will happen really quickly and they'll find it kind of evens itself out right so i would say just stick with what you've been doing yeah. if you change it drastically you might change your entire body where it doesn't fit in your jet into your dress anymore yeah yeah switching yeah. from orange theory to yoga could be like ch could change the shape of your body like you said more yeah. than continuing doing yoga orange theory because if you are a regular at orange theory it's like keep doing it also like i feel like is orange theory strength training like it's there's um the way it, it's all it's kind of i would describe it as hit yeah you have cardio is a huge factor in it and then you have weights but it's more of circuit training with weights so it's more hit style but it's like it's not to get bulky it's not bulky yeah. you're not gonna you're not lifting like super heavy no, heavy no. i mean that's the thing too i think there's a there's a huge misconception myth, yeah, yeah that weight training is you don't necessarily get bulky from doing let's say 10 15 pounds mm -hmm. if you were to be a power lifter yeah and start that and like eating a ton of yeah. protein every day like training for a competition or something yes, bulking yeah. like trying to bulk yes yeah. your body's gonna probably change yeah but if you're just doing the same thing it's hit in general hit's not gonna bulk you yeah and I think this is like one of those reminders of if people are going to throw out their opinions every left, right direction during your wedding planning, if you know better, trust yourself. Totally. Like I think this um, seamstress is assuming that strength training is heavy weight lifting, you know, in weight training in that regard. And she's picturing her turning into like a She-Hulk or something. <laughs> and it's like also that's not going to – I don't think that can happen in four months. Like, you know – it in the span of so. yeah i mean maybe for someone but orange theory i is more for like up like maintaining the the body that you want like i think they push a lot of weight loss at orange theory i haven't done mm -hmm. it in, i've i used to do it in middle school or high school and i think it was more weight loss focused there okay. yeah it's not like let's get strong right. let's build up those not like crossfit know. i think crossfit's more that yes. like let's okay let's get really strong yeah. muscles yeah you're gonna be like not necessarily bulking but it's but yeah but you, i picture the bodies of people who do crossfit versus orange theory and like orange theory like i see trim i see fit i see strong but it's not like 
Goom, goom, goom. What's up? Let me crush this water bottle. You know, <laughs> not like I'll like, add ten inches to your hips. Yeah, and muscle. Yeah. So I think remember <laughs> that, to, like, to trust yourself when people are throwing out opinions about things like this left and right. That maybe they don't know exactly what they're referring to. Yeah. Um, and also like, if you want a form fitting dress and you're a muscular person wear a form-fitting dress as a muscular person yeah you know it you don't have to be slim curvy kim kardashian to pull off uh form-fitted you know like totally rock what you got amen so i think that's the big takeaway for me on this one is just like you you do you boo do it for you diy keep on working out keep on you know living your best life uh doing the things that are good for you and the way the dress will f- will fit you will fit you, you know? And as long as you're not changing anything too drastically between alterations in your wedding day, that's the most important part. Like, you don't want to go from two orange theories a week to five orange theories a week after you've already done your final alterations because there that's just the risk of, like, your, your dress not fitting you the way that you want it to. Mm-hmm. But, again, at the end of the day, not the end of the world either way. If you want to do that, do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, like... Just get a pen. <laughs> but, you know, just keep it consistent. Keep doing what you've been doing. Um, and the last minute alterations also exist. It's going to be okay. Um, you can always do a hand stitch. You know, you get <laughs> yeah. your sewing needle and pull it on the inside there and you go. sew it in. <laughs> <laughs> Have a little mother of the bride moment. Yep. Yeah, or get a safety pin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will work. Um, and, like... If you want to make your waist look a little bit more snatched or whatever, there's accessories. There's ways to do that stylistically. But you don't need to stop what you're doing, change your workout plan completely after you've already bought your dress. Um, I would totally recommend just keep doing what you're doing. Stay stay on track and, um, yeah, don't don't let those opinions of people who are, like, not as aware as they might think they are get in yeah. the way of what you're doing so totally people like to project and people like to have a voice yes and be an expert even if they're not actually Mm -hmm. people love to be an expert yes and i'm sure that seamstress comments on a lot of things when it comes to how she wants the brides wearing her dresses to look and that's on her and that's a healing up for her (laughs) healing up (laughs) healing up (laughs) um but okay well that was it for today is there any last thoughts or words or stories that you want to share when it comes to self-care and tips for the bridal babes i think end of the day it is treating yourself like a bestie truly how would you encourage your best friend to prep for her wedding day and giving yourself taking your own advice that is something that i have for even just life in general people love to project and tell you what is the quote-unquote perfect thing to do for everything Mm -hmm. end of the day like i went to a naturopathic doctor and found out that what i was doing that had been quote unquote the The perfect perfect. thing was not perfect for me right and everyone's different and you need you know your body the best you know if your body needs something that it's not getting you know if you need to take a break you know if you're carrying too much stress and you deserve to be your own advocate you deserve to rest you deserve to have a relaxed amazing wedding day that Mm -hmm. isn't full of constant stress Mm -hmm. and you also don't have to follow a crazy wedding plan diet plan workout plan to still be beautiful on your big day yeah your significant other is loves you so deeply no matter how you look if if they don't then that is on (laughs) them and that is a whole other discussion to have in the day though it's like I think there's so much pressure to lose weight on your wedding, to look perfect for your wedding, but it is just a day. It is a six to eight hour event and you don't have to torture yourself to look any certain way because you're beautiful exactly how you are. Love it. Oh, well, thanks, Callie. Um, Yeah, I can't even believe I didn't mention the shredding for the wedding at all this whole episode (laughs) and because it it's irrelevant now. We don't talk about it anymore. Shredding for the wedding is dead. Yeah, we're over it. No longer a concept. Sorry. Never met her. Never never knew her. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Outdated. <laughs> outdated. Vintage. Not the vintage we want to buy again, though. 
<laughs> for real. Okay. And um, Bridal Babes, don't forget the buzz does not stop here. We are everywhere online, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. You can find us. And don't forget to head to bridalbuzz.com and find the new merch and the wedding guide if you haven't yet. And find Callie um, at her podcast, Healthy But Human, and also her workout app, Sweaty Studio, and her personal (laughs) page. There's so many different pages. I'm sweaty and I know it. So (laughs) those will all be in the description and make sure you head to her pages, head to her podcast to hear all of the best tips on working out, living your best life, staying beautiful. And if you want to be called a queen every day, Callie's your girl. So... (laughs) All right. Um, Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.